Hey guys, it's Mrs. Stevenson again. I'm here to read you chapter nine, which is Before It's Too Late. Um, just as I said yesterday, I do have Daisy with me, so if she starts barking, I apologize. Um, hopefully she won't. All right, here we go. You have to find Blue Tongue Buddy, Mouse says. You have to find him before he eats Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy. I know, I say. But how can I do that when there's a gate in Mom's office? How can't you jump over the gate? Mouse asks. Maybe, I say. But Mom will chase me. The whole school will probably chase me. Then you'll have to find Blue Tongue before they catch you, Mouse says. Where could Blue Tongue be? I've seen him in the library. I've seen pieces of his skin in the hall by the main door. But that doesn't mean I'll find him in the library or the hall. Where would I go if I were loose in a school? I'd go where the food is, the lunchroom. But Blue Tongue is a reptile. He might go someplace different. I think back over everything I know about Blue Tongue skinks. Maybe I know something that will help me find him. Here is what I know. Their skin comes off in little pieces. They like to hide. They need light. They need heat because they can't control their own body temperature. Uh-oh. 118 minutes ago, I was worried about the mice. Now I'm worried about Blue Tongue, too. What if the school isn't warm enough for him? What will happen to him if he gets too cold? I have to find him before it's too late. Where is the warmest place in the school? I wonder as Mom and I make our way toward the office the next day. If Blue Tongue is smart, he'll be hiding in a very warm place. We walk past a heater, but there isn't air, any air blowing out of it. Sniff, sniff. Hey, I think I smell blue tongue. I also smell pancakes, sausage, butter, and maple syrup. I love pancakes, sausage, butter, and maple syrup. They're my favorite. But I smell blue tongue too. Really, I do. I think he's in the cafeteria with the kids who are eating breakfast. I pull mom toward the cafeteria. Whoa, buddy, she says, holding tight to the leash. Where are we going? In here. Hi, Mrs. Keene. Hi, buddy. A bunch of kids wave at us from the tables. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Hmm. I don't think Blue Tongue is in here exactly, but he could be in the kitchen where there's even more pancakes, sausage, butter, and maple syrup. I give my leash a hard tug and pull it out of Mom's hand. Then I race toward the kitchen. Buddy, Mom calls, hurrying after me, but I'm faster than she is. No dogs in the kitchen, one of the cooks says. One of the cooks says. She claps her hands and chases me around a big table. Sniff, sniff, sniff. I definitely smell blue tongue. He's in here somewhere, but where? If you can't catch Buddy, step on his leash, Mom says to the cook. Now they're both chasing me around the table. Hey, a stove is a warm place. Maybe Blue Tongue is over there. I dart under the table and over the stove. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Yes, I smell him. Blue Tongue is under the stove. I stretch my front paw as far as I can, but I can't reach him. Come on out of there, I say. You don't belong under the stove. What is that crazy dog doing? One of the cooks asks. Maybe he smells a mouse, the other cook says. Not a mouse, I say, a skink, a blue-tongued skink. Mom snatches up my leash and tries to drag me away from the stove, but I won't let myself be dragged away. Not this time. I paw and bite at the stove. We have to get under there, I tell mom and the cooks. We have to get that skink. Should we move the stove and see what Buddy is so interested in? One of the cooks asks. Yes, move the stove, I say, backing away a little to give them room. One of the cooks grabs one end. Another cook grabs the other end. They count. One, two, three, and pull the stove out from the wall. Careful, I say, peering underneath. Don't squish blue tongue. I can see him under there. 
He isn't squished. But he isn't moving either. What's back there? One of the cooks asks. They both peer over the top of the stove. I don't know, the other cook says. I don't see anything. That's because he's still mostly under the stove, I say. Excuse me, excuse me. I nose the cooks out of the way and squeeze back behind the stove. Hello? I nudge Blue Tongue with my nose. He doesn't say anything. Are you okay? I ask. I think he's okay. His eyes are open. He's breathing. And his body feels warm against my nose. I nudge him again. All of a sudden, he scoots through that opening between the stove and the counter. He's out into the kitchen now. A bunch of people scream! What is it? yells one of the cooks. I don't know, yells another. Someone call Mr. Poe. No, don't call Mr. Poe, I say, squeezing up from behind the stove. I take off after Blue Tongue. I'll catch him. He may be fast, but I'm faster. I chase Blue Tongue across the kitchen and into the lunchroom where all the kids are eating breakfast. Blue Tongue stops, turns, and scurries along the wall. I stay with him all the way to the corner. Now he's stuck. I've got him, I call over my shoulder. Hey, buddy's got something, one of the kids says. What does he have? Someone else asks. A bunch of kids surround me. Whoa, what is that? In the distance, I hear somebody whisper, Oh no, it's fluffy. And that's where we're stopping for today. Chapter 10 is the last chapter, and it's called Questions and Answers. And in case you saw her moving around or heard her yawning, here's Daisy sitting next to me, listening to me read. All right, guys, I will catch you again next time. Bye.